Welcome to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Norm Bolin. This week we're in South Central Ontario and we're fishing on one of Canada's best cold water rivers. Our guide is Rob Heal. And Rob is going to do something with us today that I've wanted to do for a long time. He's going to show us how to fish the wet fly. It's a traditional method of fly fishing that's gone out of favor, but it's still a great way to catch lots of fish. I know the show is going to be exciting. Please stay with us. On today's show, we're floating down a favorite river in South Central Ontario. There are lots of good rivers to choose from around here. The Grand, the Saugeen, the Maitland and the Beaver are just a few. A few hours northwest of Toronto, there's terrific fishing for trout, bass, muskies, steelhead and other species. The countryside is beautifully pastoral and there are many good country inns and other welcoming places to stay. Our drift boat guide today, Rob Heal from Grindstone Outfitters, fishes these waters year round. Today, he's giving us a master class on wet fly fishing. It's a method that still works beautifully, but it's fallen out of favor. This is a type of presentation that's been around for a hundred years. There's no reason it doesn't work as well today as it did when it was first introduced. Fly fishers haven't always had sinking lines and the uh, the ability to put split shot on their on their uh, line, so you were restricted to the to the top foot of the water column, really. And and this is this is really how it started. So, just what is wet fly fishing? Well, it's very simple. In fact, the simplest fly fishing there is. We cast a lifelike fly downstream across the current at a 45 degree angle. Then we mend the line upstream. The fly swings on a tight line just under the surface. The trick is to get the fly to swing naturally right into the trout's feeding lane. Not too fast, not too slow. When fish take, there we go. <laughs> there's no need to set the hook. The fish hook themselves. It's tempting to set the hook, but any jerking of the line can pull the hook out of the fish's mouth or bend the light wire hook used for wet flies. It takes patience and practice to let the fish do the work. Whoops, there he goes. In wet fly fishing, the key to a good swing is proper line mending. When you're mending line, you have to affect the drift of the fly. And one area where a lot of guys struggle is not mending the line to affect the drift. One thing I see a lot is a lot of anglers will only mend the first portion of their line. That doesn't do anything to the fly. At this point the fly is still going to be swimming across the current far too fast and unnatural looking to the fish. So when you mend, we want this fly to be drifting downstream with the current, mend the entire fly line and then I'll hold the rod up high, I'm still in contact with the fly, and then I can complete the swing. If you only mend the first portion of the line, then you still end up with a large belly in the line like this, and the fly is going to be swimming unnaturally and too quick. <laughs> <laughs> There's 
no uh, no lack of fish. Well, we're having lots of luck today. We're just getting them, banging them one after the other. They like this little orange fly. So I was following uh, Rob's advice here. I've learned to mend to get a nice straight line in my drift. And I'm finding most of the fish are taking the fly at the bottom of the drift towards the end of the swing, which is what you'd expect. What happens as uh, the fly hits the end of the swing, it rises a bit in the water column, uh, tends to uh, uh, represent an insect emerging in the water yep. column, and they take it on that move mm -hmm. because, it, it, again, it's the same old story in, uh, as always in fly fishing. It's about imitating something that's alive. And if they think it's alive, they're going to go Just for it. Just give me a little more slack and yeah. lift the rod tip. There we go. There we go. There's another one. They're beautiful little silver fish. Little rainbows. They are active. The rods we're using today are typical light trout tackle from a five weight down to probably a three. You want to match the rods with the tackle for the smaller fish. A three weight would do fine, but you do have the possibility of getting into larger fish. So a four or five weight will handle those larger fish a little better. Match that up with a double tapered line or a weight forward line and a floating leader and you're in the game. The rig we're using today is dead simple. It's a floating fly line and a floating leader about nine feet long. We've attached a small split shot about 18 inches up from the fly just to get the fly to ride slightly under the surface. Generally use a soft loop in the fly to allow it to, swing, to, allow it to swim better in the water. Again, that's optional. A clinch knot will do the trick, but it's as simple as that. Let's just recap that rigging. We're using a floating line with a nine foot floating leader. There's one small split shot, 18 inches up from the fly. Tie the fly on with a small loop knot, such as a Duncan knot, or just use a regular clinch knot. Today, this rigging setup is catching lots and lots of rainbows. Small trout, but eager for wet flies. There's but, one. Oh, nice. There's one. Yeah. Well, I find they're fine on a five weight. They'd be a lot more fun on a three oh, yeah. weight, but they're fun on a five weight. Making a very good account of himself. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, lovely little fish. Oh, yeah. They're so beautiful. Eager. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Wet fly fishing is a great way to prospect for fish and cover a lot of water when nothing's rising. Focus on swinging your flies through likely trout hangouts. Hot spots are back eddies, seams, foam lines, undercut banks, and overhanging trees. There we go. There's a little fishy. There we go. Again, Rob put me into a fish. He told me exactly where they were going to be. This one, well, it's a good strong, little fish. They're strong in that yeah. current. Yeah. Hello. Hello. They are strong when they're in the current. The, uh, they use the current to their advantage to help fight against the, uh, the fly fishermen. This hook is barbless, but there it is. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Darn it. Fish like spots where there's a steady flow of things to eat. Food highways. That current seam over there where that foam is, you can see where the foam is being deposited. That's a back eddy. In, in right, back, right? This, this entire foam field here, okay. if, you think of, if you think of the dynamic of the river, where the foam is being deposited, food is doing the same thing because it's all affected by the current. Fish also like water where they can hold without expending too much energy. And fish like concealment where they can avoid birds and other predators who will eat them. What's the situation we have here, Rob? And uh, tell me about why we're going to fish here. Well, if you look at this overhanging uh, tree, there's a there's a small but fairly deep depression just in behind it, right. where the where the water gets a little noisy. And this is a this is a spot that we uh, we we typically take fish in. And we're going to fish it the same way. Start in close mm -hmm. uh, on on the inside part of the seam, 
and then work your way out into the uh, into the quicker water. Mm -hmm. And there's a bit of a back eddy there as well. So there is there is the right fish in hold here. in in this depression right here, right? They'll be they'll be oriented to the seam. The other thing to, to keep in mind too is right now we're still we're still right in the town proper. So right. these are the areas that are going to get most pressured. Once we get out of town, there, there go. you go. There we go. Just like you said, there's a fish in there. There we go. Oh, oh, it's gone. Another release. That's good. It's a shame that was a 12 pound fish. <laughs> All right, we're still looking good. 12 ounce fish, did you say? <laughs> The more water you cover, the more fish you'll hook. Keep moving to new spots. And when you move, vary your line length to get to different fish. Cover every likely holding area. You know, what we've been doing here, uh, Rob had told me before, uh, if you're wading, for instance, and you're wet fly fishing, you move down the river a few feet after every few casts to cover more water. You also graduate the length of your cast in order to cover more water. What he's been doing is he's been standing at the back of the boat in the river and just every few casts he's moving me down two or three feet. So he's motoring me down mechanically and giving me more cover and uh, I'm getting more fish as a result. There's an old saying, fish where the fish are. Covering lots of water will boost your chances. Yeah, it's important. It's a good lesson. Cover lots of water if you can. Don't stay in the same spot. That's a nice little guy. Whoops. Keep him in the water. Good jump. Oops. Got him. There you go. Got some nice sunlight there. You can see the sun. Their fins are really, really red. I don't know if you can see that, how red colored his fins are. So, cover lots of water and mend your line to get the fly to swing at just the right speed. How do you know what the right speed is? You make your cast at about a 45 and make an upstream mend. And then I watch the tip of my fly line. Once the fly and everything is straightened out and, and you're set up for the swing, watch the tip of your fly line. And if the tip of your fly line is going at the same speed as the bubbles or just slightly slower, then it's it's, we're not trying to achieve a perfect dead drift. It's not no, nymphing, no, no. but you want it slow enough that it looks reasonably natural to the fish. So that's that's basically all I do. And then it's a it's kind of a leave it alone um, yeah. presentation. If you get the speed of the fly right, the fish will take care of the rest. I, I found your advice about mending really really helpful. I have to remember to keep contact with that fly. It's different than nymph fishing when you're on an indicator and you're just trying to let that indicator float with the current. Here you have to keep a tight line at all times That's so right. that if the fish takes, he's got something to take against. So that mending uh, tip you gave me was really good. We started out with the partridge and orange, which is a soft tackle fly that incorporates the soft tackles of hens and other uh, birds with some flash in them in the form of a rib or peacock curl. And then we move to a, a slightly larger, more full, fully dressed red tab. The partridge and orange uh, worked well this morning, but when it started to fail us, we then switched. His soft tackle flies, or any wet fly for that matter, doesn't necessarily have to represent any one thing in the water column, but it can also represent a lot of different things. The partridge in orange or the partridge in green may represent an emerging caddis. These red tabs or uh, red brassies here will also imitate an emerging caddis, but they can imitate anything from mayfly emergers to salmon fry for that matter. These flies are more hair or more feather wing uh, wet flies and Again, they can, they can take on the form of mayflies, caddisflies, stoneflies, small bait fish imitation, salmon fry, so on, uh, and really give you a lot of versatility. You don't have to be species specific when you're fishing these flies. The movement from the hackles and the feathers is really what is going to entice a fish to take. 
As Norm's demonstrated today, fishing the swing with wet flies is very simple to do. It's a great way to get started in trout fishing. I've enjoyed it over the years. There's no reason that anybody can't pick up a floating line and an eight or nine foot leader and go out and give this a try. My favorite wet fly of all is the classic partridge in orange. It's simple to tie. The hook is a medium weight size 14 to size 18 wet fly hook. The body is orange silk over orange tying thread. The rib is fine gold wire. The soft hackle shoulder is a mottled brown partridge feather. Simple but deadly. Another great fly we use today is the red tag, also called the red tab. It's tied on a lightweight size 8 to 18 hook. The body is just brown thread covered with peacock curl. The tail is a tuft of red wool. And the neck hackle is a ginger or brown soft hen feather. Another simple but deadly pattern. If the orange and partridge doesn't work for you, switch to the red tag. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, we changed. It's really interesting. We changed the fly and two Three casts, we got, got a, a fish. fish. That's and uh, like you say, red and peacock. They yep. like that. Bring it in for Just you. Easy. Lively little fellows. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. A little bit. He's been uh, he's been hit too in the That's gill there. Very nice. Whoop. Look, a little bath. Hit uh, with all the uh, higher predators in here it must be a little challenging for some of these little fish to oh survive. yeah they got a they got a uh, a lot to contend with The great thing about drift boat fishing on a river like this is you can get out of the boat, especially on a hot day like today, get out in your waders, wade into the river, and catch fish that way as well. It's really refreshing. I was getting very, very hot in the sun, now I'm cooled off completely, and I'm catching fish here too. I'm getting lots of takes here, right at the end of the swing, but they're uh, they're being a little finicky. One of the great things about this uh, wet fly technique is that the fish really hook themselves. If you swing the fly properly through the water, keep tension on your line so that there's no slack in the line, at the bottom of that swing the fish take that wet fly and they hook themselves. They turn, the fly goes into the corner of their mouth and away you go. You have a fish on, you can fight it. You know, when you're wet fly fishing, you can almost anticipate when you're going to get a fish because when you have a perfect drift, when the line is perfectly straight, when you have good tension on the line and the fly is swinging through the water perfectly, more often than not, you get a take if there are fish in the area. There's a fish, right on the drift. Great, another rainbow, yeah, great. I'll bring this guy in here. Uh, he doesn't want to come in. Come on. Whoops. There we go. Oh, he let himself go. There you go. That makes it easy. Beautiful little rainbow. Now I'm going to make a few more steps and cover some more water and see if we can get another one that way. Today, we've looked at some of the technical aspects of wet fly fishing. Good technique will improve your chances of hooking into lots of fish, but wet flies are very forgiving. You don't have to be an expert to do well. That's good. I wasn't even fishing. I just dropped my fly in the water. Rob was telling me about some structure over here, and the fish took it. So they're a little eager. They like the, oh, it's a nice little fish. That was a brilliant technique that I uh, executed there. I was dragging my fly in the water, <laughs> and the fish took it. This shows you how effective the wet fly technique, though, is. They're, the they're progressively getting bigger. That's a gorgeous little fish. Just look at that. You can show it in yeah. the sun, get some shine on it. It's just got beautiful, beautiful, oh, it's okay. Beautiful, beautiful colors on it. 
They're just little gems. Go away. Uh, that's good. Because it's so simple and so deadly, wet fly fishing is the perfect way to get kids and other beginners hooked on fly fishing and to learn where fish hang out. Bounce off the side of the boat. Another rainbow. They're not big, but they're pretty. Yeah. But um, yeah, like, like I was saying, I was saying earlier about introducing kids into an environment like this because you can catch a lot of fish and it's, it's, it's great because it keeps their attention. But it's also important to mention that for the novice angler, this is, this is a great way to cut your teeth. There's nothing wrong with going out and catching a bunch of small fish in a day. Yeah. It's just going to improve your skills and that's what we're here to do. I know, I just, I love being out in nature and I just love having any fish on the end of my line. Wet flies do work really well most of the time, but sometimes the fishing will slow down, a dry spell. When the fish stop taking, it's time to change something, shake things up a bit. Uh, we weren't having uh, much luck with it. So Rob suggested that we uh, put on some more weight. Now, what, what's your thinking here, Rob? Well, it's going to get the, um, after the initial um, part of the cast, it's going to get it down a little deeper and cause it to, to rise up more. But just because the fish, they're really not surface oriented right now, I just figure we'll, we'll try and drop it down another eight inches or foot and just see if that makes a, uh, a difference. The other thing that you can do, Norm, too, is um, is mend a little little higher, introduce a little more slack right, on the initial part of the cast, just to, to let that sink a little deeper. Right. So you get the equivalent effect of a, an upstream cast when you're nymph fishing. You That's right. Give it a little more mm -hmm. slack and it'll go down deeper. When wet fly fishing, always keep an eye open for hatches. If there's a heavy hatch, you can reduce weight on your leader so your fly imitates an emerging insect. You can also change your fly to match the hatch. Often just matching the color of the hatching insect will do the trick. This guy's, this is a baby fish. Either I that, either I only either catch either that or he's waiting to, uh, he's waiting to go crazy. Beautiful fish. There's one of those little jewels, rainbow trout. Beautiful little fish. Very fast too. Yeah, speed. I learned a lot today, and I hope you did too. I know that from now on, I'm going to be using wet fly techniques a lot more. It's a great way to catch a lot of fish without a lot of hassle. For information about this show and other episodes of The New Fly Fisher, or information about Rob Heal, our guide, please go to www.thenewflyfisher.com. Please join us again next time, and until then, tight lines and take it cool. Looking for a great new fishing destination this coming season? Then come to the Algoma region in Northern Ontario. Easy to access by road, plane, or even train, Algoma features some of the best fishing in the world. Fish for huge northern pike, fat walleyes, and even monstrous brook trout. Come to Algoma for peaceful solitude and a true wilderness experience that is both accessible and affordable. To learn more, go to algomaregion.com or call toll-free 1-800-263-2546. Yeah. <laughs>